Hey guys, it's Come for MC here again. Today we are joined by a guest. We have Daxter from the Jack and Daxter series, and he is going to be playing the part of Sackbot. We're going to use him to talk about some health um, health bars today. So if I leave uh, preview mode, we can see that I have set up similar to our last video where we have a Sackbot tag and a follower. And so we are controlling this Sackbot wirelessly, which will allow us to emit when necessary. So if I unpause, you'll see that it follows, and I can control Daxter just like I could my, my normal character. Okay, so let's leave preview and rewind, and we'll see what we've got here. So you'll notice that my follower this time is set to the thick layer. Still using hologram material, but I do this so that it actually serves as a hitbox for my character. So I've made it about as tall, and I made it about as wide as the character, and we're going to want to make sure it stays this size um, when we make modifications so it still serves as our hitbox. So I'm going to put some logic there, put a circuit board down so we can put some logic on here, and this will serve as our hitbox logic. Okay? But first I want to set this up and actually lay down some material so we can put a health bar on here. So I'm taking some thin hologram material and I'm putting it on here so we can extend up our hitbox without actually extending the thick layer. And I'll just glue that there and place down a timer. So pull out a timer, set it up there because I want it floating above the character. So I shrink it down and then if you go into the timer tweak menu you can manu manually change the length and I'll go 7 here and then stick that down. Now because Daxter's orange, I think it will be fitting to make the color here orange. And then I'll set up the timing as we'll need it later, 0.1 and 0.1 for our current time. So it will be full to begin with, which is how health bar works. Okay. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up what it take or we're going to set up the basic idea of how we get hit. So I've set up some little projectiles here. I'm emitting those out of the emitters directly below them, and I've given them tags, and I call the first one red hit one, the second one red hit two, and the third one red hit three. So we're going to illustrate that you can have different uh, bullets or projectiles or whatever that you can take damage at different levels depending on what it is you get hit by. So I'm going to set up an impact sensor, slap it down, and we're going to make it include touching, yes, because we're dealing with hologram here and we're going to require a tag and match this to red hit one as per our first projectile. Okay, And now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to turn on a microchip and you'll see in a minute how this is going to work and so I'm going to need a timer. I'm going to use the timer to turn it on for a limited time. And then we'll set up our microchip, place that down and put a battery on it. So this is l allowing me to use a battery so that I can turn on a signal that's not something at a hundred percent. And you'll see I tweak this down to about I think three percent. Let's see, yep, three percent. And so what I'm gonna do when I turn on this circuit board is gonna turn on a signal of three percent. And I'm gonna do that by just wiring right to the circuit board and then go into my timer and tweak that to be 0.1 and 0.1 and inverted. Or output invert yes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpause to show you that it does not turn that circuit board on. The only way that I can turn that on is to reset the timer because it's inverted. Okay, And then because we have some funny wiring going on, I'm just going to turn that sideways to clean it up a little bit. And then we'll collapse our, or I guess I won't collapse it. And we'll look at what we've got here. So there's red hit one. And we're so when the red hit one hits our hit box, it's going to turn on this microchip for uh, 0.1 seconds. And then I'm going to use a directional combiner here to handle how I make my timer go up and down. You'll notice I wired to the negative there because I want my timer to go down when I get hit. And just to make sure that my settings are right, I need to make sure my timer is on speed scale, which allows it to interpret percentages such as the 0.3. Okay, so I unpause and I realize that I don't have my. Oop, I gotta eject the chair. I realize that I don't have my switch visible, and so I need to make sure that is visible so you can see it in preview and play mode. 
So I drop in there and you can see that we have a health bar floating above our character. And you'll notice that when I drop in and get hit by this yellow projectile, which is, remember is map to red hit one, it takes our health bar down by a small percentage to match up with that 3% battery. Okay, so I'm going to rewind here and I'm going to make a copy of this for our red hit two. So I'm going to change my battery setting to 10 and I'm going to change my impact sensor to red hit one, or red hit two, excuse me. Red hit two for the red projectile over there. So that's going to match up over here with red hit two. Okay, so let's see if this is going to work. Oh, no, I got to first set up and make sure that I have a way for that signal to take my timer down. So we're going to use an OR gate for that. So I place down an OR gate and we're going to wire each of these through our OR gate. Now the function of an OR gate when we have percentage signals is it will take the highest of the signals that it receives. So if one of them is off and then the other one is spitting out 10%, it'll do 10% because 10% is obviously the highest. Okay, and my health bar was not showing again because I accidentally rewound past that point. And you'll notice that I reset it, set it to visible, and then grab this material here to create a rewind anchor. So when I rewind again, it'll go to that point instead of prior to me tweaking my timer. Okay, so we get hit by yellow and it goes down by a little bit. And then I jump over here to the 10% one and it jumps up higher. Or I rather, it jumps down. Okay? So you'll see that we're using the same timer, but we can do different things depending on the strength of the signal that we're sending to it. And lastly, we will set up our red hit three. So we'll make another copy. Make this one say hit red hit three. And then we'll set up our timer to be 20%. And then we'll need to make our OR gate one slot bigger to accommodate our new signal. And then we'll move these down so we remain nice and tidy. Okay, so I can collapse that and test it out. So again, yellow and red will behave exactly as before. And now this purplish pink will do in much more damage than the first two because of the higher percentage signal. Okay, now we can extend this system a little bit to accommodate for um, what happens when the player runs out of health. So you'll notice that by default this timer is all the way full. You could invert that signal to recognize when someone is dead, but there are some complications when you reset health after the player dies and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set up another timer that's the exact opposite of it by using another direction combiner and just wire opposite of the one that's visible. But otherwise, it's exactly the same, and it counts up in unison with the other one counting down. So you'll notice that as the visible one counts down, the one on the circuit board will count up. So when it gets all the way to the top, it will do whatever, kill the player, trigger, cutscene, whatever you have planned for your controllable sackbot. Okay. Now you'll notice that the health, health got pretty low there which might happen when you're working on your levels or when you're playing a, le a level similar to this. So it would be nice to allow your health to refill when you pick up a health pack. So I'm going to make another copy here and we're going to make a new label which is green health. And then I'm going to uh, move my OR gate here to accommodate our new logic coming through and then we'll wire to the opposite um, signals there from our hit points, our hit box, and then we'll set the battery to 100% and make sure this is at 2% so it gets all the way up. And then we need to make something for the player to actually run into, to hit, to pick up, whatever, so that their health is refilled. So I'll just make a little piece of hologram material, uh, turn it green because health is often associated with green, and we'll slap down the green health tag here. Okay, so now when the player jumps into that, their health will be refilled based on how we've set this up. So I jump into yellow and red and, and purple here. We'll experience the same effects as before. 
And then when our health gets low, we can run over and refill it by jumping into the health bar there. So it's pretty simple and it works pretty nicely and you'll notice that all of these things happen pretty instantly. So if you've ever tried to make one of these with say a counter, you can do it, but it does not switch as quickly as using a 0.1 second timer and using these different signal percentages like we've done here. Okay, but what if we have the situation, as I'm unveiling here, where we have two different projectiles hitting at once. So here we have red, yellow, pink, yellow, uh, red, purple, and all three. I don't know why I called those pink and purple. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we're going to do to kind of clean up here is we're going to put each of these signals on their own circuit board. And then we're going to set up our addition that we've talked about in previous videos. So I'll slap down three circuit boards here, and these will accommodate our little, um, oops, and I accidentally closed the circuit board. These will accommodate our little setups that we have here. So each one will have its own circuit board, which I can then collapse to remain nice and tidy. So we'll open up the middle one and put red hit two in there. And we'll open up the third one and put red hit one in there. Okay, so we have each of these signals and we're going to set them up so they can be added together. And I'm just gonna turn them for tidiness here. And then we're going to delete our OR gate because we're no longer taking the highest, we're going to add our signals together. So we'll set up our signals, our signal addition, we'll start at 100 and then we'll set up all of our subtractions. So we're gonna need four of them here since we're adding together um, three different numbers, three different percentages. So we do 100 minus the first signal and then that signal minus the second signal and that signal minus the third signal and whatever that number is we're going to subtract it from 100. If that doesn't make sense make sure you go back and watch the addition and subtraction video and then we'll wire it up where our OR gate previously went. So now I can jump in here and these will behave exactly as they used to where only one signal will turn on at a time and then I can also do addition of signal projectile hits here. So you'll notice that when I do these upper ones, it drains pretty quickly. There's all three, and it drains really fast, and then there's the two big ones, and it drains pretty quickly. Okay, so there's a practical application of why you would want to add signals together. I know you guys were interested in what in the world we would use these for. Well, there you go. We can add those signals together, and it's a very, very nice application of when addition would be necessary to make it so it works the best it possibly could. That's all I've got for now. We'll get more on this later. See you guys.